I know is that Asus are sponsoring this video, apparently on the brand new ProArt. Now, we recently took a look at the S16, the ZenBook, which I will say is a very impressive laptop. If you haven't seen that video, definitely go check it out. But because this is the week of Computex, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. I've seen this before. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, Asus, their ProArt line, it's a, a little bit more creator focused. And does it really come with a whole backpack? Quality right there. Inside we have the laptop. So it's definitely like a larger device, like 15, 16 inches or so. All right, inside we've got the Asus ProArt. Ooh, this looks a little familiar. This is, uh, give me some G16 vibes. Well, okay, so I will actually say though, even though it feels similar to the Zephyrus G16, which I will say is a terrific 16-inch laptop. We did a video on that at CES, you can check that out. So it's got the little, um, the Asus dial. I forget there's a specific name for it, but um, it actually has a little dial which you can use for- The uh, dial pad. Dial pad, thank you very much. Um, it also does have a full-size SD card slot on the side, so it looks like it's been tweaked a bit. We also have USB-A, USB-C, full-size HDMI, the power, headphone jack, the whole thing. We also have ourselves a, oh, that's a nice looking display. Yeah, 3840 by 2400, so it's a much higher resolution display. Let's actually take a look at the spec here. 64 gigabytes of RAM! Woo! 64 in dual SSDs? What the, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. We have two two terabyte SSDs. Of course, we have the NPU built in and a 4070, which is interesting, but it makes a lot of sense because once you go up to like the 4080 and the 4090, the power requirements are significantly higher. And it really means that if you're gonna put that in a laptop, you need to be thicker with the cooling to, to match. But a 4070 actually I think is a good match. So we've got ourselves a 200 watt adapter. We do have included in the box, the Asus Pen 2.0. So if you think about this as a device, this is really meant for creators. You know, you can still game on it, of course, just like how you could do creative tasks on a G16, but they put a little bit more of the budget toward the super high resolution OLED display, the additional ports such as the full size SD card reader, and you've got massive amounts of RAM. You've got this Ryzen processor, which of course has the AI functionality. On top of that, you also have stuff like the matte black coating. The only thing I'll say, and I said this also about the S16, so this is really a personal sort of thing for me. A 16-inch laptop is a little bit on the bigger side. Like I prefer like a 13, 14-inch, like something that's a little bit easier to carry. Now, I will give them that this is quite thin and quite light for something that has this kind of horsepower. Like it's easily gonna fit in your bag. Asus has your back. Oh, okay, 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 Don't, no, no more throwing laptops. Wait, there's two? Yeah. We're not just doing, oh, I thought the video was just on this. What's... Well, why don't you open the box? So I'm assuming that this is a more portable version of the Pro Art. Oh, it's a little guy. Oh, okay. it's your favorite. Oh, I was just saying I wanted a smaller one. They have a small. Oh, okay. That's not just a little bit smaller. The whole box is like dwarfed by the 16. Hold on a second. Now, what are we looking at here? What is this? Is this the Pro Art? That is the Pro Art PX13. 13. 13. Okay, can I just take a real quick second? 13-inch laptops are basically dead. Everyone has moved on to 14-inch laptops, and that's fine, because if you've got a 14-inch laptop with really thin bezels, it's about the same size as an old 13. But what I like is a physically smaller footprint. Now, I'll say this is actually a little bit thicker than you might expect from the side. Not like crazy, but it's a little bit of extra thickness, but it is cooling, cooling, cooling. Look at this, huge vents on the side, vents on the bottom, vents also on the back. Like this thing, even though it's small, I'm gonna guess that they're packing some real performance performance in here. This series of ProArt laptops are essentially the professional cousins of the gaming line. And I think that's a really smart move because so many people will go out and buy a gaming laptop to maybe do some gaming, but also to get real work done, you know, whether you're running in Photoshop or 3D rendering or whatever the case is, video editing especially. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of gaming laptops have a pretty color accurate display and plenty of performance. But having a more dedicated creator option, which could do gaming, but also importantly, give you more features such as that higher resolution display or touchscreen or whatever, makes a lot of sense. Also, I love the matte black coating on these things. They look sick. Inside we have, oh my God, I love it. Oh, it's so good. And it, oh, it even rotates all the way back. Bro! It also has a very large touchpad with the dial pad in the middle. You do have a decent selection of ports, including HDMI, USB-C, aux, USB-A, micro SD card. But importantly, this is definitely a touchscreen because you can rotate all the way around. Dude, I 
irrationally like how tiny this is. Like, just compared to the 60, like, again, great laptop, I'm gonna spend some time with it, yeah, of course, but my heart goes out to the little guy. Cause like, if you can get remotely similar performance on the smaller form factor, to me, I'm always gonna be about that. So it's rocking an 1800p OLED touchscreen. Yes, so it is also Ryzen powered. And we are outfitted with 32 gigs of RAM on this and a single two terabyte drive. So obviously with these smaller form factors, not gonna be quite as much space. But importantly, it is also rocking an RTX 4070. Holy, this is a little guy, right? It's fairly lightweight. I don't have the exact specs of it on hand, but like it's a small, thin, 13 inch device. If they could push any kind of reasonable TDP through this system, this thing should be solid. And just because the cooling seems to be such a huge part of it. I mean, again, like so much of the sides and the top and the back are dedicated to the vents. I can tell you what the peak TDP is. Peak TDP, hit me. 115 watts. Ooh. Uh, for context, the S16, which is of course a much larger device, much less creator focused, that has a 28 watt TDP. Can I open it up? I think I'm gonna open it up. <laughs> I, I just wanna yeah, see if I even turn it on. Oh God. I did turn it on, I did turn it on. No, no, I just wanna look and see because you know, a, a thin device is great and lovely and wonderful. But if I could instead have a slightly smaller form factor with a little bit of extra thickness to fit a full size battery and plenty of cooling, I will take that any day. Of course be super clear, this video is sponsored by ASUS, right? I have a lot of good friends at ASUS, so I'm not gonna say that I'm like completely unbiased or anything, but they've been kind of killing it lately. ASUS are kind of going out here doing side quests, making some unique form factors, which depending on who you are, might be perfect. There's a little sticker here. Can, can you see that? Just a little zoom in there, a little sticker there. I'm probably not supposed to take that off, but uh, if I accidentally let my screwdriver land on it and accidentally take that screw off, no one will notice, right? You won't tell them if, if I don't tell them, right? You don't, you don't think they're watching this video right now? What, you think Azus watched my videos? I love you guys. Inside we've got, oh my goodness, look out, look at this. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, okay, first question, that battery looks small, but it's not, dude. This is what I'm talking about. If you look at the physical size of this battery, it looks really small, right? This is a 73 watt hour battery. That is a properly large battery. So even though the, lap, the battery doesn't take up a huge amount of this sort of space, it is still gonna probably give you very solid battery life. Those speakers are probably gonna drive some pretty decent volume. So it's got a smaller physical SSD. You can swap it out if you want, but it is a smaller form factor. Again, because it's a 13 inch laptop, I'm sure they're trying to consolidate it as much as possible. It's a two terabyte drive, but this looks like the same kind of form factor that you get in something like a Steam Deck or a Surface or something, or an ROG Ally, I believe. And we also have our Wi-Fi 7 module. So there's a lot going on here with this cooling setup. So we have dual fans. So we have ourselves the CPU, and I assume the GPU is on this side, but we have, okay, so one heat pipe, two, three, four heat pipes. Now it does have soldered on RAM, which I'll be honest is becoming very, very common, especially when it comes to these higher power uh, CPUs use just because they're running at very, very high clock speeds. And you can tell that there's not exactly a lot of space for anything in here. Without knowing the price of this, I'm gonna guess that this is probably not gonna be insanely expensive. I mean, obviously, you, know, you got a Ryzen 9, presumably, and you know, a 47, it's not gonna be cheap, but you're getting, I think, a lot of cooling capability with this. Basically what they're doing here is they're using a combination of liquid metal and honestly just a bunch of big heat pipes, big fans, and a lot of cool, right? Like they're cooling this the old school way, which again, comes down to the fact that it's a little bit thicker, but that extra thickness enables this thing to have way more performance, way more battery life. Look, it's such a complete no-brainer. So let me put this laptop back together, spend some time with both the 13 as well as the 16. But I gotta say on first glance, especially this 13, has my name written all over it. I mean, how can you not want a little physical dude with a little bit of thickness, but a whole lot of performance, a whole lot of heart, a whole lot of soul. So let's start out with the powerhouse, the ProArt P16. Right off the bat, the display is a major differentiator from the G16. We're looking at a 4K ASUS Lumina OLED panel. Not only is it a useful 16 by 10 aspect ratio, but it's also a full touchscreen, which works with the included ASUS pen. Now we know that some of you might be thinking, isn't this an awful lot like the ROG Nebula OLED on the G16? And while both displays are impressive, there's a key difference here. The Nebula display is tuned for gaming performance. Super high refresh rates, crazy peak brightness, that whole deal. The Lumina on the other hand is laser focused on creative work. Think color accuracy, 4K resolution, color gamut coverage, the stuff that matters to professionals. It's funny, 
performance wise, both creator and gaming laptops actually have like a pretty similar demand these days. But what really stands out to me here is the RAM. You can pack the P16 with up to a whopping 64 gigabytes of 7500 mega transfers DDR5 memory. That is insane in a laptop, even compared to some high-end gaming rigs. Seriously, I don't care if you're rendering a K video or training a complex AI model, you are not going to be hurting for RAM with this beast. Well, unless you're one of our producers with a million browser tabs open, Alex. Guilty. Aside from that stampede of RAM, you can also spec this thing with up to an NVIDIA RTX 4070. That's more than enough horsepower for even the most demanding 4K video editing workflows, plus it offers all the compute you'll need for AI tasks. Now, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that I haven't really talked about the elephant in the room, the processor. As of recording this video, all that I can say is that this is using the new Strix Point AMD Next Generation Mobile APU. We should be seeing updated Zen CPU cores, better RDNA graphics, and a healthy dose of NPU power for AI tasks. But I'm sure that future Austin will have more details to share down the line. Speaking of future Austin, I'm here at Computex where I also got hands on with the third new member of the ProArt family. This is the PZ13. Now at first glance, it looks like a Surface style tablet. There are a couple of major differences between this and the rest of the line. First and foremost, this is water resistant. So it's not water proof, mind you, but it is designed to be taken about as a tablet. You can get a little bit wet, but on top of that, it also does come with the keyboard and trackpad attachment, as well as the kickstand included. On top of that, this is powered by a Snapdragon processor, which means that of course it is a Copilot Plus PC and you should have solid battery life with your tablet form factor. So if you think about the bigger ProArt laptops, is designed for more heavy duty creative tasks. This is going to be a little bit more for graphics work and things that are going to be a little bit lighter weight. But even still, this is a really unique member of the ProArt family. My personal favorite has to be the much smaller ProArt PX13. No surprise there, right? I mean, I just can't say enough about the 13 inch form factor. Like, seriously, I wish more laptop makers would take cues from ASUS. Now it is a little bit thicker to accommodate the robust cooling and the very similar performance you get to the P16 but you absolutely cannot beat this level of portability. The performance is pretty much what you'd expect from a ProArt. It's almost on par with the P16, only falling behind in things like maximum RAM, storage space, and 115 watts of TDP compared to 120 watts on the P16. But trust me, it's got more than enough muscle to handle high-res video editing and other demanding creative tasks. Now I do have to say that I can't fully evaluate the performance of this laptop, mostly because it is running not only unfinished hardware, but especially unfinished software. So none of the performance profiles are really properly loaded and some things just outright aren't working on this early sample just yet. So stuff like the dial pad is a very cool idea in theory to allow you to easily have shortcuts or be able to scroll through tools. Unfortunately, it's not working on this device just yet. Of course, it will be working on the device once it actually starts shipping. But that kind of just speaks to a larger overall point, specifically with the PX13. This is a somewhat unique device in the market. So it starts at $1,600. This is the more maxed out configuration, which I assume is a little bit more. But what you're getting at that fairly expensive price is a ton of theoretical performance. Again, I can't fully evaluate it right now, but with 115 watts of TDP, with the Ryzen mystery processor and a 4070 inside, I mean, that's a lot of horsepower that's on tap. And the fact they've done all this with a large battery in a chassis which is this sort of small, and I say thick, but you can see even on the side, like it's not that thick, it's a little bit thicker than like an HDMI or something. And obviously with the 16, which I'm not giving as much shine, like that has pretty much all the same features, all the same advantages and everything, but like, I mean, let's be real. We were ever gonna doubt that I was gonna prioritize the little guy? It's just, it's just so small. Now, if you put all this together with that mysterious AMD processor, which theoretically is a big leap in pretty much every single way, both of these ProArt laptops really are a shot in the arm for the ProArt line. It's a smart move to take what works with that gaming line and expand it with features that are designed specifically for creators. So thank you very much to ASUS for sponsoring this video. You can check out both the P16 and PX13 at the links in the description. And stay tuned, there's still a whole lot more to come from Computex this year.